Hello and welcome to a special edition of Eyesight in Review. We're coming to you from ASI 2018 in Orlando, Florida. You may see in the background behind Jill and myself the 3ABN truck because we're actually backstage behind the main stage at ASI. So you may see some people walking back and forth. We're getting ready. Well, there's always stuff going on backstage, that's for sure. But being here at ASI is a tremendous blessing. We have a special one-hour program. I'll let you, Jill, that seems weird. Sweetheart, that sounds more like I it. I like sweetheart better. <laughs> what we're actually going to have in this one-hour program? We're bringing you a special behind the scenes peek, as it were, of what takes place here at ASI. We're going to have a special role of the setup and what takes place, and especially interviews with people at the different booths yes, that's featuring right. the different ministries, showing what they are doing to share Jesus in the marketplace. I love mo nothing more than a personal testimony of what God is doing in and through people's lives, and that's what we're bringing you tonight. But first, to kick off our program, we have with us a very special guest. We do. We have Mr. Garwin McNeilis. When I think of ASI, I think of the McNeilis family. And I know many of you at home are aware that Danny Shelton had open heart yes. surgery and he's doing well. Continue to pray for his recovery. So he would be here, Mr. Garwin, and he would thank you. I know he would yes. because at, at home he talks about you a lot and your support of 3ABN yes. through all of the years. And I think what's so exciting, I think it won't be until heaven yes. that we know the full impact yes of you and your family, of ASI for 3ABN. But I want to just ask you this question. Why does ASI have a special place in your heart and in your family's heart? Well, ASI was special. I started coming to ASI back in the 80s. First, my son came, Denzel, the first year, and he came back and said, Dad, you've got to go to this. You won't mm. believe it. Wow. So we started coming to ASI then. My grandchildren started coming. Now my great grandchildren, Aww. and we have four generations here. At and this ASI, you at got this four. This ASI, and through this ASI initiative, I have several new members to our family who met here. <laughs> so they and found their spouse. Married. They found That's their spouse. Right, they did. Wow. And so this is special, and I come here because. This is a quick charge for mm. God. Mm. Amen. You can charge up here, you hear what everyone's doing, and there's an excitement in the air, and then mm. visiting the booth is very important. Mm. See what's going on yeah. through self-supporting ministries. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Doesn't sure. it build your faith to see yes. what God is doing in and through other ministries? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. You know, because I think a lot of times in life, you know, we can just go about our daily lives and get into a rut, which is not a good thing. That's right. And so when you come into ASI, you get that quick charge and you actually get ideas on how to share Jesus in the marketplace. Yes, and, and you, 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 you get on an offense. Oh. I like that yeah, word. Yeah. Yes. And if you're on offense, you're never on defense. <laughs> and you're never, never negative. And ASI is a positive organization. It is. That focuses one's thoughts and, mem and mm -hmm. to be on fire for God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When I think about you, Mr. Garwin, and the McNeilis family, I think of ASI because to me you're an That's integral right. part of the ministry of ASI. But not only that, I think of evangelism. You have a heart for evangelism. I think of the One Day Church Project. Yeah, the one-day school And clinic. the projects that you're involved in right now. Tell us just a little snapshot. Well, we've been privileged to be involved. I, I, I'm I, kind of evangelism through construction. <laughs> oh, yes. And there's different forms. Yes. yes. And uh, I like churches. I like the simple church, the one-day church, and, and especially Christian education. Mm. Christian education is the genius of the Seventh-day Adventist church. Yes, and good point. To be involved and ASI is involved all over the world. Mm. It's exciting to mm. be a part of it. You know, before we actually started this program, you were mentioning something, and I like the word that you used, and it was eternity. Mm -hmm. And that's our ultimate goal, was goal right. isn't it, in life? It's for eternity. <laughs> it's preparing young and old to meet Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Mr. Garwin, I tell you. Thank you so much for your support of 3ABN, for ASI, and for taking the time again to join us on this program. We need to go to a role. And the role is an actual behind the scenes setup of what happened here before you saw ASI live. There was a lot of setup that went on. Let's go to that role right now.
We hope that you enjoyed that roll that was kind of sped up of what production does here at ASI on the setup. Now, what you saw in just about one minute takes us about two days, two and a half days to get it all set up. But you know, we enjoy it. I appreciate the crew. They work very long hours behind these cameras and lights. We have crew right now working very hard. We have some crew over at the uh, main hall getting ready for another program that's getting ready to take place. But we appreciate the crew that we have and the tireless hours. Hopefully you enjoyed that role. Thank you to Tyler who put that together. We do. We have, I always say, we have the best crew in the world. You know, I we're agree just with so that. blessed. They're creative, they're gifted, and they're talented. Oh, yeah. So I'm so thankful for each one of our crew. And they have a good attitude, too, because there's long hours that, uh, you know, events like ASI require, but they do it with a very willing and happy spirit. Yes, and I know we're talking tonight specifically about um, what God is doing in and through different ministries. Many times we bring you the nuts and bolts of ministries, and we just say, okay, um, um, this is what this ministry is about, but tonight is all about personal testimonies, and I love that. Right now, we're standing in the booth area, and I love that about working the booth. Greg's always doing production, and I get the privilege of being at the booth here, getting to meet the people as they come by, hearing their stories, and learning about how they fell in love with Jesus through the ministry of 3ABN, or what God is doing in their life. So it's an incredible thing. Your personal is. testimony is really powerful. Yeah, it is. And I always enjoy the booth. Sometimes I get to kind of peel away from production and get to come by the booth. And it's always a real blessing, a blessing and privilege to be a part of God's big family and to hear the encouraging stories, like Jill mentioned, of lives being changed for eternity. So we thank you for your financial support, as we always say, of 3ABN and all the other ministries, because it's making an impact for eternity. It is. And we have a great team here at the booth. We many do. of our 3ABN general managers and managers and many other supporting staff have come mm. uh, to work the booth. That's and it's right. been such a blessing. Right now, what we want to do is go to an interview with Pastor uh, John Lomacain and Pastor Doug Batchelor with Amazing Facts. 3ABN is blessed for many Many years to partner with Amazing Facts, and That's right. we're so thankful what God is doing in and through them. And I know Pastor Doug, he had a story that just happened yesterday Incredible. here at ASI, and let's go to that interview now. Hello, friends. This is John Lomacain coming to you from ASI in Orlando, Florida, and I'm here with a very good friend of mine, Pastor Doug Batchelor, the president of Amazing Facts Ministries. Good. Good to be here with you, Doug. Good to see you, John. Every time we get together, it's always a blessing. And we know that God is blessing through Amazing Facts. And how many years have you been president uh, and speaker of Amazing Facts? Probably been about 23 years now. Wow, that's amazing. That's yep. amazing. I know you've seen lives transformed in amazing ways. Share with our viewers and listeners today some of those lives that have been transformed through your ministry. Well, just since I've been here at... Um, uh, ASI, someone was sharing a story with me last night, and we love to hear the, the stories of, uh, there, I guess, was a, a Mormon gentleman who was going to one of the satellite channels, and the Mormons actually have a 24-hour-a-day channel, and he thought that he had gone there, but by accident, he went to Amazing Facts, mm. and he started watching. He thought, well, that's, I didn't know we believed that, but that makes a lot more sense. Mm. And then he found out he was watching our channel by accident. Oh, and, by uh, providence, I would say. Well, by providence anyway, and he kept watching. He was, uh, a doctor was sharing this with me last night that uh, he was treating him, and he said, I think I'm going to need to join the church now. Hmm. And so that just happened last night. But one of the stories that I heard that was uh, one of the most touching is a young girl, uh, 15, 16 years old, wrote a letter, and she said that for years she lived in fear she had been raised an evangelical Christian. She had been taught that if you're good, you go to heaven. If you're bad, you burn forever and ever in hell. Wow. And then they also taught in her church a predestination, meaning you, God is predetermined who's saved. And she never thought, well, I have a choice. God's decided, so I don't know if I'm saved. Wow. And she believed that she was going to die unprepared and was so afraid of hell. She had nightmares. She just, she couldn't love God that would burn her forever and ever. And she got online and she decided, I'm going to just look up the subject of hell. Wow. And she went to one of our websites called Hell Truth. She found the sermon and she said she felt a weight lift off of her mind for the first time in her life. She realized she could love God. Praise and this Lord. is a you know teenage girl. Hmm. And she used to think about suicide, but she thought, if I kill myself, then I know I'm going to hell. Wow. 
And so she was just didn't want to live. She didn't want to die. She just was in a very articulate letter. Just so, so much fear. And watching the programs uh, changed her life. Then she did the studies online. Right. Yeah. And you have a wonderful resource that's changing lives and transforming lives in amazing ways. But more recently, you put together a, a booklet on a very controversial topic. And talk about that and how lives are being touched by that. Yeah, there, there's been a lot of confusion about the subject of God. You know, it, it all begins with knowing God. Eternal life exists is to know thee. And understanding who is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so we recently put together a, a book that's called uh, Exploring the Trinity. Okay. And one God or three. But it really helps people understand uh, the personality of the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Father, their relationship. And, you know, admittedly, there are some mysteries. If any man says, I can explain God, that's right. it'd have to be God. But it really does help settle this confusion. How can you have three divine beings and there be only one God? That's true. And those answers are in the Bible. And so uh, some people have been reading this and said, you know, I finally feel like I can appreciate that the Bible's consistent mm -hmm. in saying the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are God, uh, and yet He's one God. Wow. Now, so, do you have any lives that were transformed by Amazing Facts of people that joined Amazing Facts or worked for Amazing Facts afterwards? Yeah, quite a few. Uh, I walked into a Taco Bell one day, and uh, a lady there said, are you that guy on TV? And I started to visit with her a little bit, uh, and, and she uh, uh, said, yeah, I've been watching the programs. I ran to my car, I came back, I gave her a testimony book, the caveman book. They read it, I invited them to church, and the Lord just totally changed their lives. They uh, quit smoking, hmm. and uh, they had struggled with drugs. Uh, Susan and Rich Collenberg, Susan worked in our um, publishing, Bible school, media department for years, recently retired, but uh, and her husband planted a church, and just some incredible testimonies of uh, people wow. who have been transformed by the ministry that now work with the ministry. Wow. So, well, yeah. Doug, it's always good to be with you. It's a short interview, but thank the Lord for what God is doing through your life and amazing facts. As Doug has said many times, you want another amazing fact? These stories are about the amazing ways that God is transforming lives through this ministry. For 3ABN, this is John Loma King. Thank you, Pastor John Loma King and Pastor Doug Batchelor. It's really encouraging to hear the stories that Pastor Doug was sharing. And again, we appreciate your prayers for these people because as people give their lives to Jesus Christ, Satan is on the attack, but we know that Christ is stronger. Amen. Being here at the 3 ABM booth, as we mentioned earlier, is always very encouraging because we get to meet fantastic people that come by here at the booth. And you have met someone this very afternoon someone very special. I did indeed. Um, just this afternoon, a beautiful young woman came by the booth and she said, I am here because of the ministry of mm. 3ABN. Amen. I joined wow. the Seventh-day Adventist Church because of that. And we have Glennie with us here. Tell us, Glennie, where, where were you born? Where were you raised? Well, I was born and raised in Kuwait. And then we were, uh, we were actually Baptists. I was born in the Baptist family. Wow. But then eventually, I think 15 years ago, my mom started watching Kids Time and all of those songs in 3ABM because we were a family who were really interested in music. So I remember we used to record those songs in our tape recorder and then learn them and sing it in our Sunday schools back in our church. Wow, yeah. so how did you even find 3ABN? I think she was, I mean, we, we had different Christian channels and this was one of the channels we found. So yeah. is this online? Is that how you found it? No, it was on the TV. On the yeah. TV. So you're just Incredible. flipping channels and your mom yeah. found Kids Time. Uh-huh. And you were attracted first by the music. Yes, music was the most attractive thing for us as a family. Mm -hmm. And then eventually she started watching messages on uh, ornaments and things like that. Things she was interested in and things we had issues in our church mm -hmm. concerning matters such as this. And then yeah, we started discussing different things as a family. And then I remember after watching 3ABN, we understood the importance of family worship. And my dad was like really sick. And he was like about to die because he used oh, to wow. have this asthma attacks. Mm. And then my mom said, maybe this is time for us to have worship. And we started sitting together as a family. 
started discussing what we learned by watching Amazing Facts and 3ABN and things like that. And that's how we started studying the truth. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So you sat around for family worship uh -huh. and you would discuss what you had been watching on 3ABN. Yes, yeah. Wow, do you exactly. remember some of the speakers that you watched? Yes, that was Doug Batchelor for sure. <laughs> I clearly remember him. Amen. And then, yeah, things such as It Is Written yes. and then the other 3ABN Today shows and yes, Brenda Walsh and her, the ministry her family is doing. Yes, those are the ones I remember right now. Wow, that's an incredible testimony. And so then over time you were studying uh -huh. and then you decided you needed to make your family, needed mm -hmm. to make a decision regarding that. Mm -hmm. Yes, in 2011, we decided maybe it's time to back off from my church. And then we had the elders from my church coming over and asking, why are you making this decision? I can feel the sense, I can sense the demons around this house and things such as mm. this. You guys wow. are following cults, this and that. But then we told them what we believe in and they didn't have any argument in the end and they just left the house. And then we Googled Adventist churches nearby and we finally found a church. And I remember the first Sabbath we went to church, I cried because I never felt mm. that loved before. Amen. Be yeah, wow. it was. A really good Praise family. the Lord. That's an incredible testimony. And Amen. you watched ASI mm -hmm. and GYC back yeah. home in Kuwait, never yeah. thinking you'd ever get to come no, to one. <laughs> ever. I, I would be like, wow, someday I would get to go to ASI or GYC. But I was like, that is just impossible. It's too expensive. How can I do it? But now... This is your first ASI. Yes, is that it right? is. Wow. Yeah. So what is, what is happening in your life right now? You become a baptized Seventh-day Adventist member, you and your yes. family? Yes. In 2013, Four of us, we were baptized together as a family. Amen. Yeah. Yes. And then now you, you're you studying here. You're a student here in the States mm -hmm. at Heartland College. Mm -hmm. I am. I that's am. Wonderful. What are you taking? I'm studying health evangelism. Yeah, that's where God has led me so far. Amen. Yeah. That's incredible. Thank you for being willing to share your testimony with our three yeah, family at Thank home. Thank you for your ministry. <laughs> it's incredible. You know, just to think she watched, you know, it's so incredible. Think she watched oh, yeah. ASI, GYC, all of these things, and then the Lord brought you here. Mm -hmm. And we pray God's blessing over you. Right now, we're going to go to another testimony. This is Jason Bradley. Mm -hmm, he had right. a chance to talk with Pastor Taj Paklib with Revelation of Hope Ministries. And it's an incredible testimony about someone that Taj prayed for. Yeah, incredible, in his family. For 15 years. Yeah, amen. Let's go to that role right now. Hello, I'm Jason Bradley. And here with me today is evangelist Taj Paklib and he is with the Revelation of Hope Ministries. How are you doing today, brother? Good, man, glad to be here, appreciate good, it. Good, good, good. Now, we just have a short amount of time, but I, I wanna know, first off, what is Revelation of Hope Ministries? Uh, Revelation of Hope Ministries is an evangelistic uh, revival ministry seeking to change the population of heaven Amen. by sharing the hope, health, and harmony of heaven in all the world. Amen, and you weren't always in the church, correct? Yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't brought up in a religious or a spiritual household, and so my parents never went to church. They never brought me. So growing up, I had no idea what was God or who was God, and mm -hmm. I found myself making terrible decisions, caught up in a life of drugs and partying. But uh, when I was 16 years old, someone came and knocked on my door and invited me to a Bible prophecy seminar. And I came to those meetings. I heard about Christ for the first time in the context of a prophetic message. My heart was deeply moved, and through those meetings, God found me. And as God found me, I found my calling in life. Wow, wow. And so how has God utilized, when you, when you found your calling and your purpose and your passion, how has God used your ministry to transform the lives of others? Well, for the past several years, we've been uh, doing Revelation of Hope ministries, just trying to share in, uh, the Lord Jesus in, in the context of his end time message, the three angels. And uh, we have so many stories from so many different parts of the world, but perhaps one of the most meaningful to me is uh, one of my own family members. Sometimes they can be the hardest, Absol hardest absolutely, to reach. Absolutely, absolutely. And so my Auntie Helen uh, was a relativist, a pluralist. She didn't believe in absolutes. And when I first became a Christian, she was always trying to question my faith and argue with me. And no matter what I said, she would never listen. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to stop talking and just let my life do the talking. And so I prayed for her for at least 15 years. And uh, finally, a few years ago, she ended up coming to one of our seminars, this time with an open heart and a searching mind. And uh, as she heard the message after message of Christ and 
his, uh, his end time message, uh, her life began, be, became transformed. And she sent me a text message a few months after those meetings. She said, I have not drank a drop of alcohol nor, nor smoked since the meetings. Wow. I do crave, but the craving is wiped out when I focus my mind on his greatness. Wow. I see the light, is what she said. Wow. Praise and the uh, Lord. My, my, my heart was so thrilled because I saw God answering my prayer, 15 years of prayer before my very eyes. And uh, shortly after that, she was baptized. And uh, now she's the church clerk at our home church. Wow, she's the church clerk yeah. now? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Praise the Lord. And that, you know, sticking with it, 15 years of prayer, not giving up, that's, that's powerful. What are, what's another story of somebody being transformed? Well, we've done meetings in, you know, big cities and small, small country towns. Mm -hmm. uh, another impactful story for me is my friend Rob. Uh, he was married to an Adventist sister that went to the Bakersfield Church. And uh, he would go to a church with her from time to time just to support her, but mm -hmm. he wasn't really interested. And uh, throughout the years, or 30 years of marriage, uh, he would go to church now and then, but the sermons never really caught him. Uh, he attended a few of the seminars, but never made a decision. And so when I came to town, uh, Sister Debbie, her's her name, she wasn't, uh, you know, real confident that Rob would make a decision. Mm -hmm. But she invited him anyway, and he came just for the opening night, just to support her. But he, he never left. He came wow. every night. And when we finally got to the third angel's message on the mark of the beast, seal of God, he said, there's no way I can ignore this. He was baptized. He became an elder of the church. Now he's the head elder of the church. Wow. And on top of that, he ended up going to one of our training schools to be a Bible worker. And now he wants to be a pastor of the Adventist church. So he went from wanting nothing to do with the church, per se, to coming to a Reven Revelation of Hope Ministries seminar, yes. came to that, took in the word, you were teaching the three angels messages, and then he ended up wanting to be an elder. He had studies, he kept attending, one had studies, became an elder, then became the head elder. Now he wants to be a pastor. Amen, yes, and he told wow. me that there's nothing wrong with the message, we need to keep preaching it, focused and centered in Christ. And he also told me to, to tell everyone that if you have a loved one that you've been praying for, sometimes it takes 30 years, Amen. but don't give up. Don't stop praying. Don't stop inviting. Sometimes God moves mountains one pebble Amen. at a time. Amen. Be persistent. Amen. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for what you're doing for thank the you, cause brother. of Christ. Great God bless you. Thank you, Jason Bradley and Taj Pakalib. You know, we should never give up praying for anyone in our family, our friends, even people that we meet, let's say a gas station and Walmart, their face, in case you don't know the name, person's name in Walmart, but their face comes to your mind, you should pray for them. You know, sometimes you can get weary in well-doing, but we shouldn't ever get weary in well-doing because as we pray day by day, we don't know what's happening in that person's heart. And what a great testimony from Pastor Taj. It is an incredible testimony. That's what really I like about ASI. I agree. You know, because we get to see people who are actively involved in ministry, mm -hmm. people who want to get out and share Christ. That is really the, the whole thing of ASI, is sharing Christ in the marketplace, right? And so That's what true. an incredible blessing to meet people, to have 3 a partner with different ministries mm -hmm. where they are sharing Christ in their in their family, as Pastor Taj did, and in their community. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I like the uh, theme for this year, which we've talked about before, but it says business unusual. And then there's a, a clock. It's kind of neat how the graphics design people put that together for ASI, but it's almost at midnight. And uh, we, as, as mentioned, especially Seventh-day Adventists, but as Christians in general, when the clock gets to midnight, Jesus is coming. So we're really close. They also talk about the image in Daniel, about being in the t very toenails of the image. Jesus is coming very soon, and there's no delay. I think well, you're right. Everyone here is excited about sharing Jesus where they work, what they do, and uh, it, yeah, it's a blessing. You may notice that we're not in the booth area. The exhibit area is way, way, way off to my right. It's a long walk. It you is a go walk. Up the escalator, down another. It's a beautiful walk, but it takes a while. But we're here in the general session area where the evening meetings take place. We're in the far corner where the jib is. It has the big boom on it that gets the wide audience shots. We're here in that corner. You can see the stage. 
off in the distance and ways that you can participate obviously is your financial support mm -hmm. and things but also praying for these meetings that are Amen. currently taking place and the lives there are people here that don't know about Jesus but have actually been invited to come mm -hmm. and so we need to pray for them Amen. and we have some roles we're going to go we to we do we have some other interviews that we want to go to now um we're going to do two here back to back okay let's do that we're going to see john denzi with pastor john bradshaw from it is written and again three of is so privileged to partner oh, with yeah, each we are. one of these ministries we love pastor john mm -hmm. bradshaw and his preaching and he has a neat testimony from scandinavia mm -hmm. someone who came to know jesus and after that who are we going to hear from well we're actually going to go to tim parton and you know that tim likes music, and he's going to be interviewing a couple, a husband and wife, Dave and Marlene Colburn. Let's go to those roles right now. One of the dynamic ministries of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is It Is Written. And I have here the director and speaker of It Is Written, John Bradshaw. It's a pleasure to see you again. It's good to see you. Always good to see you, brother. Tell us uh, briefly about It Is Written. What does It Is Written do? About 62, 63 years ago, a pastor named George Vanderman said, I want to be more effective as an evangelist. And he had this idea to utilize television as a means of doing that. So for more than six decades now, it is written as being about media evangelism. So we're on television all around the world. We conduct evangelistic meetings all around the world. We produce resources that are used all around the world. And we do a lot of training in evangelism and a children's ministry and so on. So we are a multifaceted media ministry dedicated to sharing the everlasting gospel however we can, wherever we can, and whenever we can. Praise the Lord. Give us the web page really quick. Itiswritten.com. Itiswritten.com. Very simple. Itiswritten.com. Easy. You can't forget it. Well, praise the Lord, you're on 3ABN. We love being you're here, You're on too. the Hope Channel. Sure. And across the nation and across the world. Yeah. How many languages? Oh. Well, it is written as in... You know, it kind of depends how you look at this, because there are it is written around the world. But our it is written is in three languages. English, e Espanol, the American Sign Language. And we're thrilled to be there in sign language as well. And, and you know my good friend, Pastor Robert Costa, who is the director oh, and yes, the speaker for yes. Escrito Esta, mm -hmm. doing a great, great work. Amen. Just baptized a number of people, had many, many decisions in Toronto, Canada, and now he's in Malaysia. He, he doesn't stand still, this guy, training and preaching and teaching. So we love having a very strong Spanish language ministry as part of what we do at It Is Written. Amen, amen. Well, so many years, thousands of lives impacted thousands baptized through the ministry of It Is Written. Can you give us a story that oh. will inspire our people? Oh, the hard thing is knowing where to begin. So I'm going to give you about five, but I'll boil it down to two. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you one that I love. Somebody, a, a young man in Sweden was cruising online and found our evangelistic series at itiswritten.com. He was not a practicing Christian by any stretch of the imagination. Long story short, he watched the series, watched it again, and sought out a Seventh-day Adventist church and is now an active member today. If you know much about Scandinavia, this just doesn't happen a lot. Yes. A young man in Scandinavia. So that is in, indicative of what takes place in any number of places uh, through the ministry of It Is Written, but I want to share this story. Uh, a lady, uh, I'll say she's middle-aged, at her wit's end, planned to end her life. This was in hmm. the northeast of the United States. And just as she was planning to do this, there was a knock at the door. These were, it is written, Bible workers doing Praise community surveys. And they said, would you be interested in studying the Bible? And she said, what do I have to lose? They studied the Bible with her for a few weeks. And just at that time, we came to town with an it is written evangelistic Praise series. God. As I spoke to her across the table, she was wiping away tears with the palms of her hands. She was weeping so much, Praise telling me about her life story, how things went so bad, how things bottomed out. She had no hope. And then she said to me, but you people loved me. Praise God. And I love that. It wasn't that you people convinced me about the truth. You people indoctrinated me. You people loved me. And so that's bringing media and public evangelism together and reaching people and giving them hope. We just love that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I don't know if you can squeeze another one in in about a minute. Can you think? There are so many stories. I know it's hard to choose. You know, there are a lot. I continue to meet people who come and say, you know, it was 55 years ago that I heard George Vanderman speak, and I've been here in the church ever since. People who will say, it's been a year. I went to an It Is Written series, or I saw It Is Written on television. Mm -hmm. I do love this. We have a daily devotional called Every Word. And, if, yes, and if, yes. if anybody goes to our website, they can, they can get this sent to them every day. 
a lady contacted us. She said, I was going to end my life. Hmm. It was, oh, that's two stories like that, yes. I suppose. She said it was over. And I don't know why, but I just decided to click on this link. Hmm. And it took 60 seconds. That's all the devotional was. And I thought to myself, maybe God does love me. Maybe there is a plan for me. Wow. And she said, I'm alive today and I'm in love with God because God led me to this every word from it is written. So there are life, the life-changing stories, John. They're just wonderful. It's why we do what we do. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. We want to uh, invite you to continue to pray for It Is Written. Remember, you can go to itiswritten.com. Amen. .org, and you can get all the resources they have available. They even have things for children. Sure. Continue to pray for It Is Written. And director, speaker, John Bradshaw, God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. God be with you, my friend. Hi, I'm Tim Parton, General Manager of the Praise Him Music Network, and it's a privilege to be here at ASI with Dave and Marlene Colburn. It's a wonderful music ministry based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And um, I know that as, as a musician myself, one of the wonderful aspects of ministry, working for the Lord, is the fruit that you see, the result, um, the changed lives in people. And so um, I've kind of asked you to give me some examples or just tell me a little bit of how you've seen the Lord work in your life. Well, it's been really neat over the years to see um, how music can really impact people in a powerful way. And I think sometimes um, certain people are impacted by music more than maybe they are by preaching or sermons or even Bible studies in some cases, and it just can really reach our hearts. And I think of one time we were going to a concert. We travel around and do concerts, and um, we were going to be doing a concert at a church in a certain location, and we had sent all the promotional material. We thought it was all taken care of, and when we arrived, uh, nothing had been promoted. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so that was kind of an interesting situation, but we'd sent some information out to a few other area churches. So we had about five people there and one lady from that church who I had known years ago was also there. And um, it was hard to do a concert in a large church with about five or six people in the oh, audience. Wow. But uh, as private we were, concerts. Exactly. <laughs> but as we were playing along, I noticed tears streaming down her face and I said, okay, Lord, somebody's heart is being touched and just please speak to her heart through what we have to share. And so after the concert, she said, I know that was really hard to share that concert, but I needed to hear this music and I needed to hear the messages that you had to share with us. So it just warmed our hearts that even though in our humanity, we failed in making sure that word got out um, that somebody's heart was touched and that's always our prayer absolutely so. wonder, wonderful to see god has exactly who he wants that's right. Right. and he can minister right. no not matter how accident. big exactly that's it's right. not yeah. by accident at all yeah and i've uh, it's interesting when you when you start going through college and you meet somebody that you want to spend the rest of your life with your expectation is well maybe maybe she'd maybe sing a little bit or maybe play the piano but no Marlene, she'd been around the world with her violin, with different orchestras, and, and we've been able to do a music ministry uh, just spanning almost almost 20 years now, so it's awesome. been amazing. So one of the things um, that, that we did um, when we were in Ohio, I, I played the piano for um, the, the hospital there in the yes. Kettering area. So yes. they had a piano there, and so I was playing one day, and this lady, she came up, and I saw her across the way, and she was just sitting there, just kind of, just sitting there, just kind of downcast a little bit. And I, I noticed um, tears coming down her cheek. I was playing the piano, got up off my um, piano bench, went over there and gave her a CD and said, I hope this can um, take you through the difficult time that you're going through. And it really touched her heart. She came by afterwards um, the next day and brought her family and, and told me, Thank you so much for, I mean, this is our favorite CD. We love it. Awesome. You know, it's really brought us closer to, to God. And it's been a peaceful moment in our life during this very, very stormy time. Absolutely. And, yeah, so Praise this is where we can just touch people's lives. That's yeah. all music well, that's, is about that. Exactly. You know. Well, thank you for, for your ministry. Where can people reach you for your, uh, to, to book you for a concert? or? Sure, yeah. Them? Our ministry um, is on, online, colburnministry.com. C-O-L-B-U-R-N? Mm -hmm. Colburn. And then the word ministry with a Y. Okay. And at gmail.com is our, our email. If you want to email us directly, and then .com is where you can uh, find our, our music. 
contact us to, to come and do a concert or, or whatever you'd like. So Wonderful. Well, I know that you'll be coming to the 3ABN studio to do a, a re new recording. In two uh, weeks. In a couple of weeks. So, awesome. So we're Lord. looking forward to that. And um, I can just encourage you to uh, keep keep the faith and keep ministering in music. You also are a... Uh, so sort of I'm, I'm a treasure. Um, okay. So under treasure of the Southern Union. I work with um, the, the team there. Um, and then, of course, Marlene, she's homeschooling our, our children. We Wonderful. have three uh, children, two boys and a little girl. And, and I understand also they physical. are musicians yes. as well. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. I think maybe a little bit came through. Okay, good, <laughs> so good. So the gene pool there. So, yeah, they're well learning piano and violin. And then um, she's a physical therapist as well. So uh, not practicing right now, but... Um, so she loves to minister through that as well. So. Wonderful. Well, I encourage you uh, to keep moving on in your music ministry. God bless you. That was a great testimony with Dave and Marlene Colburn with Tim Parton there. You That's know, right. Marlene and I kind of grew up together. Years ago, we were in Pathfinders together. and Years um, ago? Baby, you're not that old. Oh, thank you very yes, much. You're I feel, still young. I feel much better oh, now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this could have been a little while ago. Um, we were in Pathfinders together. And even then, she was an incredible violinist. Mm. She used to play with Dr. Virginia Jean Rittenhouse oh, and wow. the New England Youth Ensemble. Yes. And they used to travel. And um, just to see what God is doing in her life to see how God is using she and her husband Dave. I was so blessed to hear that testimony. You know, sometimes we feel like we're only ministering to four or five, just a couple of people, and is it even touching someone? And here it ministered to that woman, and then she was crying in the middle of that that um, concert. Yes. And then to see what God did. Well, I think it's it's encouraging too because you know any of our talents, yeah, you musician or a speaker, but you know we all have talents that God has given to us. And I think it's very important that we use them for him. It may yeah. be something as uh, you may think it's simple, but writing a little card. I know Jill and I get cards from time to time from different people. And it's always encouraging because they put a little scripture in it or just <laughs> I'm thinking of you today or we're praying for you today. Something like that smiling if you maybe your talent is smiling and you think oh, that's not worth much it's worth a lot because here at ASI we we're up and down these uh, corridors and I'm kind of guilty of that sometimes or maybe I'm not smiling all the time because I'm thinking seriously about something <laughs> but there are some people that just seemed when you go and see them in the hallways they're just smiling mm -hmm. all the time so God has given us talents Amen. and we need to use them for him and it's encouraging to see how these are the Colburns mm -hmm. and of course Tim he's always uh, an encouragement uh, are using their talents for God Amen. That's right. We're going to go to a couple more interviews right now. We'll do these back to back as well. Okay. Um, I think the first one is with Shelley Quinn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sure is. And uh, this is with Pastor Mark Finley, who's mm -hmm. very well known if you've watched 3ABN or been a part of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for many years. He's well known. God has given him a gift for evangelism. He loves evangelism, he and his wife, Teeny. And uh, Shelley Gwen Quinn had the opportunity of sitting down with him here at ASI at the Booth area and got some wonderful stories update at the Living Hope School of Evangelism. Did I get that right? And that so, sounds good. Okay, and then we have another role after that. <laughs> we do. After that, we're going to go to Brenda Walsh. She's general manager, mm -hmm. of course, of our, our Kids Time Network, mm -hmm. our Kids Network. And she spoke with Sherry Mills with My Bible First. And they okay. have an incredible ministry for young people and not so young people, too. So let's listen to both of those interviews now. I'm at 3ABN's booth with Pastor Mark Finley, who is the assistant to the president for the General Conference, but he has been an evangelist, a televangelist. Now, we don't count it in years, we count it in decades, for over five decades. And you have a new program called the Living Hope School of Evangelism. Tell us briefly what that is. Shirley, the Living Hope School of Evangelism is a training center to equip pastors and lay people to do evangelism. We train them often in the mornings. Our sessions usually are from Sunday night to Thursday. There is no tuition charge for that. Wow. We operate directly on the gifts of God's people that come in. And we train them in things like how to give Bible studies, how to hold small groups, how to reach out in health seminars to reach their communities, how to hold evangelistic meetings, the total aspect of church growth. We're so incredibly excited about what God is doing. We are, we are located in Haymarket, Virginia, in Northern Virginia. 
in a local church that is growing rapidly for Christ. Christ. We have all kinds of programs going in the evening. We will do health to the max, cooking schools, archaeology programs, Bible study programs. It's an active church that's working for Jesus. Amen. Tell us about how God is using this to impact individual lives. Let me tell you, uh, Shelley, three very simple stories. First, Richard and Evelyn. Evelyn found us on the internet. We have a very extensive social media internet program. She was looking for meaning in her life, heard some of my sermons, woke up her husband, said, we've got to check that church out. They came. They got integrated in our health programs. Richard and Evelyn are highly professional people. He had worked in the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. He is a financial manager for the United States Army government. He has a Ph.D. degree and teaches diversity for two universities. The health message so radically transformed their lives that they were open to our health partnering and health coaching program. They came to my evangelistic meetings. They now have been baptized. Praise God. I think of Anna. She was studying the Bible, came across the Sabbath, found us on the internet, one day showed up in church, and she's in church each week now. I think of Debbie, a seeker who got a card in the mail took Bible studies with one of our Bible workers, Joel, and she came to our evangelistic meetings and she's been baptized. What we see is an openness, a receptivity. We are reaching out in a variety of ways using the methods of Jesus to reach people physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally with the gospel. And that's what we're teaching at the Living Hope School of Evangelism. Amen. And it's so impressive to see that there is no charge. People know that this isn't for the money. It is all for the glory of God. What are your plans for the future? We are expanding rapidly. We're expanding into radio. We have a national radio program now on one of the major networks in America. We're expanding constantly our internet and social media, our television ministry. We've started what's called Hope Lives 365 University. We have 13 courses online. You can take them at hopelives365.u. That's hopelives365.u. You can go on and take courses in how to give Bible studies, health courses, leadership courses, discipleship courses. And we are so excited about the people who come to our school. And uh, we have classes coming up uh, this year in September 7 to 9. There's a weekend classes that we're running on health ministries, classes on church growth. I teach a class on preaching for elders. I mean, we've got so much that's going on, <laughs> Shelley, that uh, you prove, God you prove, is good. <laughs> you prove the point yeah. that there is no such thing as retirement for a man's servant of God. Now, real quickly, online, is, there a t is that tuition-based? There are two ways you can do it. We have free courses online, or you can take our tuition-based courses online. Okay. Okay. So either one, Hope Lives 365.u. Hope lives 365.u. Mark, thank you for all that you do for the glory of God. And it's so exciting to see how God continues to use you to impact so many people. We just want to encourage you, if you're in the area, to go by wonderful complimentary training or go online to Hope Lives 365. Dot you. Once again, God bless you, brother. Thank you for all Thank you, you do. Thank you, Shelly. Okay. Hi, I'm Brenda Walsh. I'm here at ASI in front of the My Bible First booth. And uh, I'm here with Sherry Mills, Hi. who is the president and founder of My Bible First. Hi, Sherry. Thank Hi. you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Can you tell our viewers at home, what is My Bible First? If you, in just a very short description, sure. what is it all about? My Bible First is a ministry for children and their families to take them through the Bible, learning about Jesus as their best friend, and understanding the great controversy and the wonderful plan of redemption. So you have you have um, uh, studies that can be used for uh, Sabbath schools. What's all the purposes that you would use? We have our studies are for family worship, homeschool, Sabbath school, evangelism. We cover it all, and they go from beginners all the way through youth. 
That's true. And, and how long have you had this ministry? We've been in the ministry about 20 years. 20 years. Yes. I know. Um, just to our viewers at home, I am really thankful for sharing her ministry because they have been a part of our Kids Time ministry for over 10 years now. Uh, if you go to kidstimeforjesus.org, you can sign up online to take her Bible lessons. And I tell you, it's a very popular uh, um, Bible study. We have lots of people. You can do it at your own pace. And I want to thank you for allowing Kids Time to be a part of your ministry. We're thankful it could be done that way. You have thank a you. lot of new products I haven't seen for a we while. Do. So we do. You have, besides all the lessons you have. Um... Everything we have supports the lessons. And so we have music, visualized songs. We call them. We're phrase by phrase. They learn the songs and the meaning of the songs. We also have these little booklets are our newest ones, which are taking them through basic doctrines of the Bible at a primary kindergarten age level. And what we're trying to do is lay a foundation for these children right from the beginning. We also have a lot of teaching aids like posters. We have over 30 posters that help them uh, visualize what they're learning as well. So if someone is watching this and said, I would like to know more about My Bible First, how could they do that? They can contact us on the web at mybiblefirst.org. They can also contact us uh, by phone. 877-242-5317 and we are always there to answer and help any way we can. Yes, you are. <laughs> I've enjoyed working with you all these years, Sherry. Tell me, have you had any just heartwarming experiences where people's lives were touched, were blessed, brought closer to Jesus? I would love to tell you one of my favorite. A non-Christian father was bringing his littlest one to the beginner Sabbath school. Mm -hmm. He read the lesson to her every day, and that man is now a baptized Seventh-day Adventist member because Lord. of those lessons. Praise the Lord. Don't you, doesn't it just warm your heart? I, it does mine. Well, and another one at the opposite extreme. We had an 80 or 90-year-old, one of those, uh, woman call, and she said, do you mind if I order some lessons for myself? And we said, any age is fine. That's right. And she said, I'm doing that because I don't really understand the Bible, and I read some of your lessons, and they are helping me so much. It's, that was thrilling. That, that's what I call yeah. a Holy Spirit hug. When, Absolutely. When God allows us to know how he uses us, that's yes. a Holy Spirit hug, right? It is. It it's is. It's amazing. It and is. is there is it, maybe time for one more example? Well, I love it when teachers send us feedback and tell us that their Sabbath schools are growing. Children are actually studying their lessons. One little boy was in a prayer meeting and kind of bored. Suddenly they were talking about the prophecies of Daniel, and he jumped up and said, I know all about that. We just studied that in juniors. And <laughs> he was up right into the prayer meeting then. Praise the Lord. Well, yeah. Sherry, I want to thank you so much for um, all you do for Jesus and for it's, children around the world. And the if Lord. you would like to contact Sherry, My Bible First, your website is again mybiblefirst.org mybiblefirst.org and I want to encourage you to reach out to Sherry, she's very responsive I can tell you that, you can also go to our website kidstimeforjesus.org her contact information is there as well as you can sign up for online uh, Bible studies and uh, is there any last words you would like to say just to, to parents I would like to encourage parents to realize that we are at the end of time. Jesus is coming soon. Our children have to have a solid foundation to stand on or they won't make it. Amen. And I couldn't agree with that more. Yes. It's kids time to share Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda Walsh and Sherry Mills, for that great testimony. And before that was Shelly Quinn and Pastor Mark Finley. I liked uh, the both of them, of course, but um, this at the end here, there was a, an older person, more experienced, I should say, that was That's also right. blessed by My Bible First. And here at ASI, there's also a lot of young people that are involved. You know, we have the evening meetings, and you see all the little 
the little people, the little young kids, and then all those up to the teenagers, all being involved here at ASI at the different mm-hmm. meetings and stuff like that. So it's, um, it's, it's a blessing. Amen. We have one more interview we that we want to take you to right now. This is with Pastor C.A. Murray, General Manager of our Proclaim Network, along with Dr. Leela Lewis. Mm-hmm. And um, she has an incredible ministry with Your Best Pathway to Health. 3 bn has been privileged to work with Your That's Best right. Pathway to Health. And she's going to share in a, a wonderful testimony for us now. I'm here at ASI with our favorite Dr slash energizer bunny <laughs> that is dr Leela lewis ceo of your best pathway to health if you've been living in a cave for the past four or five years you may not know what your best pathway is but it is a move of god in the body of christ i call it that is revolutionizing a uh, high touch ministry in the seventh day adventist church um, and since we've got so little time doctor i want to kind of put it in your hands right away because we want to look at, after the four or five years that you've been actively doing this and the thousands of lives that your ministry has touched, as you page through all of the stories, the personal stories, the human interest stories, which story kind of stands out in your mind? I know there must be several. There's a lot. But it's the one that kind of floats to the surface that you can tell us about. You know, CA, I think of Carolina. It was Pathway Los Angeles, and Carolina was a young woman, a beautiful woman, but she had these lesions on her neck, Mm. and they had kept her from actually living a normal life. She felt like she could never pull her hair back. She had to hide. It was congenital nevus is the scientific term. Uh And and these big black moles were all over her, and she'd gone to several dermatologists, and they told her, there's nothing we can do for you. We don't have the funds to cover it. There's nothing we can do. Mm. And so she's driving down the road on her way to work in San Bernardino, and she turns the radio on and she hears this announcement of this mega clinic taking place at the Los Angeles Convention Center and she thought do I think they might be able to help me she thought about it she kept driving send up a little prayer yes I think I want to go to that (laughs) so guess what she does she gets to work she's thinking to herself you know what the boss is never gonna let me go that woman won't let me do anything she walks in and the boss wasn't there so she walks in checks in and checks right out and goes to Los Angeles Miracle of miracles, they got her in. You know how it is, CA. Oh, our yes. lines, I mean, our lines are kind of long, oh, right? Yes, very much I mean, so. they're not like short lines. So <laughs> she actually got seen the same day. She got taken in to our laser specialist, because, you know, we had laser yeah. doctors yeah. there. And they burned the lesions down with the lasers. And then our dermatologist, one by one, took every single lesion off. And afterwards, with tears streaming down her face, she, like, pulls her hair back. And she pulls it back in a little bun. And she goes, I get to go to the beach now. I get <laughs> to pull my hair back. I get to have my hair up for my wedding day. It just made such a touching emphasis. But what was the most beautiful thing about that was so our dermatologist prayed with her mm-hmm. and invited her, kept in contact with her, and invited her to some studies that were taking place in Loma Linda at Advent Hope. She came to Advent Hope. She started coming every Sabbath and continued to study and is still studying for potential baptism. So praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. God is so good. Praise the Lord. To me, that's just a beautiful story of whole person health, changing the outward and changing the end word. I like the idea of whole person health. This idea that that uh, she followed up. I did not know about the follow-up story. I remember hearing her testimony that her life had been so radically changed because she could wear, um, you know, anything but a turtleneck now. Exactly. She could wear other kinds of things. She could pull her hair back. She could be freed from this exactly. kind of self-imposed prison. And so, yet Jesus took her from that self-imposed prison of her sin as yes, well and yes. giving that to him. It's yeah. so beautiful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 30 seconds, give me a little promo. The little promo is if you want to change your life, if you want to become energized and working for Jesus and about whole person health care and getting to that spiritual health, come join us and at our next Pathway to Health event. Your best ha- pathway to health. Couldn't spend your money any better, couldn't spend your time any better, and you're doing the work of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor C.A. and Dr. Leela Lewis. 3ABN and Your Best Pathway to Health have worked together now for quite a while, and we really appreciate the tremendous effort that goes into helping others. And I think that's what we've heard about today in this one-hour eyesight and review special program from ASI. It's been a, a long day, but a good day here, and we're here on the stage of ASI. 
We are. It's been an incredible journey. We hope you have been blessed by hearing the testimonies and Amen. the stories of what God is doing in people's lives mm -hmm. um, all over the world and right here, particularly at ASI. And we have with us Brother Tim Parton. Oh, yeah, a special and friend. Tim, I tell you, we appreciate this Tim. is your first ASI. This is, and it has been just wonderful. I've enjoyed uh, going in the, in the where the booths are mm -hmm. and row after row of ministries that are ministering to places all around the world. Mm -hmm. And it's just uh, uh, wonderful to know that God has his people yeah. um, that who are willing, if Amen. you're willing to, yeah, to use right. whatever you have in your hand, uh, to certainly uh, he is willing to use you. And there, there, there is a need. There There's is. not a corner of the world that there isn't a need. So it's nice to know that people are willing you to know, do that. Yeah, and Tim, I, maybe you have some words for someone at home because that's a really good point because sometimes people may feel they're in their corner and they have mm -hmm. nothing to give. But what right. you said is so true. Yeah, I've always said if it's if it's making an apple pie or or Amen. whatever, right? That's right? You just said your stomach was growling. That's right. Yeah, so it's been a long we would day. we would appreciate it if we could get that right now. But um, I love but apple truly, pie. wherever you are, whatever you are able mm -hmm. to do, use that talent for the Lord. If it's to your ne next door neighbor, mm -hmm. or if it's uh, across the country, around the world, somewhere, somebody needs you to be the hands and feet of Jesus to them. Amen. Amen. You know, and earlier in the, this hour, we talked to a wonderful couple of Colburns with right. music, and I know music yes. is dear to your heart. Oh, yes, so we want is. to mention this too, that Tim, on our way out of this program this evening, Tim's actually going to play Amen. us a song or two. Right. And what are you going to play and well, why? And in fact, going along with the theme of the fact that they're uh, wherever wherever we are mm. where we can be used of God mm. I want to play a little medley of where he leads me I will follow and I have decided to follow Jesus amen, amen. so we're going to go to that we want to just say thank you for joining us for the special eyesight and review so we're going to say good night and God bless you Tim thank you so much